Good morning, my name is Jacob Folger. I'm an artist sculptor and today I'm going to show you how to uh, make a garden gnome. I, I did a video, just uh, the last video I did uh, on that um, was a, a, a garden gnome standing um, up and this one is going to be leaning against a mushroom. Um, so after you knead your clay, you need to knead your clay to uh, to condition it to get all the uh, ingredients mixed up inside the polymer clay, but it also uh, makes it a lot more pliable if you do that. So just knead it for a few minutes until it's kind of warm to your hand. And then you can uh, roll a ball like I just did. And now I'm going to uh, roll it so it's kind of this shape. If you apply a little bit more pressure at the top, it'll make it more the shape of a mushroom stalk. So like that. And then you can flatten the bottom and uh, so basically I'm just coming up with basically this the stock of the mushroom I'm working on a piece of paper here because I want to be able to move it around and, and, and that sort of thing it'll be easier to get off the paper than it would be to get off the table itself because the table it would stick to more and uh, I'm going to get another uh, bit of clay here. This will be for the uh, cap of the mushroom. And I'm going to knead it a little bit as I go. Make sure it's pretty good. I knead it a little bit before the video started. I'm going to roll this into a ball. And then I'm going to uh, start kind of turning it in my hands and uh, flattening the outer edge while leaving somewhat of a rise in the middle there. Just want to try to create, you know, basically a mushroom cap there. And uh, to get it to uh, bond better uh, to the stalk, I'm going to take uh, a sculpting tool and I'm just going to um, score the top of the stalk here, rough it up a bit, and then I'm going to do that on the bottom of the center of the mushroom as well, mushroom cap. And then I'm going to twist those pieces together like that, and that will make them stick better. So it's it's kind of fun to do positions, you know, to have to put your gnomes or little um, figures into uh, into some kind of position. That's what that's what we're going to do here today. Um, and then once you see how this is done, you'll be able to, you know, probably uh, take that and do uh, little figures in all kinds of positions based on what you see today here. So I'm just just to make the the mushroom kind of a little bit more lively and, and interesting. I'm going to bring it back over to the left here like that and then turn it that way to make it just a little bit more interesting. Okay, the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to start the legs of our little guy here. I'm going to start with a ball of clay like that. And then I'm going to roll it into a noodle be between the palms of my hands. Like that. And then just fold it. And then you've got basically two legs there. And I'm just going to lay that there for a minute. And then I'm going to start creating the torso. So I roll a ball roll it slightly oblong like that and then again to uh, join the pieces I'm going to score the two parts where, where they're going to be joined like this and then twist them together
Okay, now I'm going to start the arms. And, uh, you know, I usually, again, I, I, I start with a ball. It just kind of gets us to a good starting point. And this is this, uh, what I call the simple shape sculpting technique. It's really a great way to learn how to do sculpture. Um, it certainly isn't the end all with uh, that. You know, you can do all kinds of ways. You can carve, you can do whatever. But, um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the arms, uh, it's gonna be one long noodle across here like that. I'm, I'm going to do it this way. You don't have to do it that way. You can also put them on either side and, you know, cut it in half and put them on either side. But this is how I'm doing it right now. And then I'm going to blend. And when I say blend, I mean uh, draw the clay from the arm or the noodles, the noodle of the arms into the torso like that. Okay, now I'm going to um, start working on the positioning and uh, I'm going to fold this leg like that. Over the other the other leg. So it looks like he's kind of got his legs crossed. And let's go ahead and put the head on also, that'd be a good idea. So uh, with that, we, again, we uh, st score that and score the uh, top of the torso above the arms there. And he's not going to require a neck, and the reason why is he's going to have a beard that's going to obscure all that. So I'm not worried about the neck right now and twist it into place and then this uh, this is going to this arm is going to come up and he's going to be kind of leaning against the mushroom like that so uh, let's kind of bring that more to a point so he's got a little bit of an elbow I'm going to blend it in the back and just, just to get it to stay there instead of uh, scoring it this time. And I'm just going to kind of work them into that mushroom a little bit. And, uh, you know, sometimes it helps to have, if you have a friend that can pose for you or you know, you could, uh, you could, um, you know, uh, stop the video, pause the video for a minute to get kind of get the positioning right. That would be helpful as well. Now, what I'm going to do is we need. Uh, I, I want. I want to wait to do this because uh, he needs a base to stand on for this to be sturdy. It's not going to be sturdy like that. So, we're going to uh, take a, a bit of clay here roll it into a ball and then roll it into an oblong shape and then flatten it out a little bit and this will be a base that he can stand on that the, the whole thing can stand on to keep it all tied together. If you didn't do that, that would make, that would not be very sturdy. And even when it's baked, it's going to be a problem. It, it might break. So you kind of have to do this. But I want to wait to do it because I want to know the size of the footprint that I needed to make, basically. So just shape it to uh, to fit everything, and then. I uh, definitely want to go ahead and let me just move the camera down here so you can see this okay. Okay, so then uh, 
we definitely want to um, to score where the mushroom is going to go and where his foot's going to go. So we can just sort of figure that out. We'll just put that right there. And then the bottom, score the bottom, and then the bottom of the foot. Ah, direct hit, okay. So then, uh, and then just twist that in. Just twist that, kind of twist it into place so it stays there, all right. And then just twist his hips a little bit there, so get that looking a little bit better. And this uh, and this arm, I think what I'm going to do is um, just uh, put a little elbow there. I just creased it a little bit so it would go you know, be a little bit easier to go in and then so he's just sort of hanging out there like that and then uh, you can take uh, you can take a little bit of clay uh, for his shoes um, you know depending on what size you want um, make it about this size I'm going to put that on the the bottom there and then I'm going to take a smaller piece because I'm not going to lift his leg up at this point I'm just going to uh, put that at the front of the uh, pant leg and take a sculpting tool here and just uh, kind of press it into place there So he's coming along and you know this is kind of a smaller piece I mean you could you can make this any size you want I mean it doesn't we're doing it this way we're doing it small smaller anyways um, but you could make this you could use the same thing that we're doing here and make it bigger or smaller you probably you're probably going to want to go smaller because I mean bigger because it's going to be easier for you it's it's harder to uh, to sculpt in miniature than it is to uh, to sculpt you know bigger okay so now uh, we're gonna start working on his um, his beard here I'm gonna move the camera up now Okay, so I'm going to take a piece of clay, roll it into a ball, and then I'm starting to roll it in a noodle. But as I do that, I'm going to apply more pressure up here, causing it to go to more of a point. And, uh, and I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. Not a lot. I want it to. I want it to have some bulk. I don't want it to, um, you know, be completely flat. That's for sure. And then I'm just going to bring up the edges here a little bit, so you know, to create kind of this this look here. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to put it on his face. And press it in. And if you saw the other video I made, I showed, I showed you that I curved the beard a little bit. Um, I think just for aesthetics, the mushroom is leaning this way. I think I'm going to have the beard coming this way. A little bit it just adds a little bit of interest to the piece makes it a little bit more whimsical and it's kind of neat and then I'm going to put his mustache on I'm gonna take a ball of clay small ball of clay like that 
I'm going to roll it into a little uh, into a little ball, and then I'm going to roll it into a noodle of clay. But I also want to roll the ends to a slight point. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to put that on, on the beard there. And for his nose, I'm going to just roll a ball of clay, not very big, but not really small either so something like that this is gonna be a really easy face it's a small it's this is a small sculpture so on small pieces I don't like I don't like to get into a lot of detail especially when I'm teaching a video for myself I might do different but for you I want to keep it simple especially the face and so uh, I'm just gonna take this I'm just gonna take this ball and put it on there and that's going to be his nose. Like that. And then I'm going to make his hat. And I'm not going to do his eyes. I'm going to pull the hat down so it's kind of bumped up against his nose. I just think it would be cute and that's how I'm going to do it. Um, so, but if you wanted to do eyes, you could just put a couple little slits um, and it would be actually fitting for this sculpture because um, you know it's he's like just hanging out you know he could be dozing there so that actually might work out and then uh, you want to roll I'm rolling this between my fingers I do a lot of rolling you know I use my hands a lot so you know this might be easier for me rolling between my fingers than it is for you you can always do it between the palms of your hands as well. So I'm bringing his hat to a point, which is the, you know, typical gnome-like uh, hat. And then I'm going to, um, using my fingers like this, I'm going to uh, flare out the bottom of the hat. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, push in with my thumb in the bottom so that his, ha his head will fit inside there. But I'm, I'm just doing it gently and I'm, I'm rolling uh, the hat in my hand as I do it so I don't deform the hat. And you, you, you do it this way because I, you find that you'll be deforming the hat and then it's gonna look all funny and everything. So, okay, so let's just set it on there and see how that looks. Yeah, which it works out pretty good actually. Okay, so I just want to recap the hat. Definitely want it to uh, be going, leaning a little bit. I like to do that because it just adds life to the piece and um, you know, this is kind of a lively little piece actually. Um, so, um, and then uh, we want to add uh, sleeves, um, so he's got basically he's clothed right but his hand is you know his arm doesn't look like it terminates at any point so we're going to take a little noodle of clay like this and put it around and so it looks like he's got a sleeve there you can just uh Right at the very end, you can blend it in a little bit like that. Um, do that on the other arm as well. I'm going to actually pull this arm away and I'm going to see if I can get it more bent like that. So it looks like he's got his hand on his hip. And then we'll take a little bit of clay 
a little little clay and just put it in here and then just wrap it around uh, so he's got basically looks like he's got a sleeve there just gonna press it in in the middle there When he's soft like this, it's nice to have something to lean him up against. Um, when, you know, you can work on getting him to stand up after you're done sculpting, but having something like this, a block or something, this is a, a backboard for the, for the uh, film set. Um, I'm just leaning him up against, but you could have something like a, a block of wood or a rock or, you know, uh, a jar from the kitchen or something like that just to have them you know make it easier for them to stand up like that now there's other things you could do um, you could add textures to his beard if you wanted to I showed that in the other video you just need something sharp and you can draw lines like carve little lines in uh, I'd like you to go uh, look at that though on the other video I'll put a link to it in the uh, description area of this video because I'm not I don't want to texture his beard and the reason why is I just like there's a lot a fair amount of detail going on here but it has a nice soft appearance and I really don't want to harden it up by uh, adding uh, uh, texture to his beard so we're just about there and, uh, and I'll show you how to do the finish um, before you um, finish it though you you want to go around and smooth out all the rough points um, and uh, that sort of thing now I also should tell you that I'm sculpting in black clay and the reason why is because my finishes that I do are really pop on the black clay um, a lot of people actually I wasn't sure if the the people the viewers would would like that um, the finishes that I do but they apparently do <laughs> there there um, a lot of people are, are doing the finishes now um, I know that because I actually have a lot of contact with the people that watch my videos so um, you but you could also um, sculpt it in white clay or uh, multi colored uh, different colors you could have the you could do the stock of the mushroom in green clay and whatever, and you could do different colors like that. Um, but this is just just the way I do it, and um, and so. But you do want to go by, uh, go around, and and you know, get all the imperfections and that sort of thing. I want to talk real quick about the tools that I use. Um, most people already know if you've watched any of my videos that. I use these wood clay sculpting tools. Um, these shapes, by the way, are available still. You can buy them even though I've had these tools for about 20 years. Um, I really like these. They they just work for me. I, I know there's a lot of tools that you can buy. A lot of, they, I mean, they make a lot of different kinds of tools for sculpting polymer clay. Um, and these are these are really common. You might see these people using these a lot. I bought these a little while ago. I don't use them that much, but I have them. Uh, you know, a sharp knife is good to have. It's a sharp knife, and a couple small paint brushes sometimes come in handy. You can use a paintbrush with a rubbing alcohol to get things nice and smooth. Um, with uh, with the uh, your sculpture. And uh, so, um, and you can get all this at the art supply store or online. So we've got, um, this is the uh, product that I use for finishing. It's called Perlex Pigments. It's a powder, and you can paint it on. You paint it on before you before you finish your, before you cook or bake your sculpture, um, and uh, it's really pretty. I think you'll like it. So, um, just to move this up a little bit, there we go. And 
And the way, the best way to apply it is to take a, a small paintbrush like this, and uh, you can uh, you can put it put it into the uh, the color, and then put it on the lid so you you can dip easily. Um, and then and then you should on a cloth or paper towel or something like that. In my case, I'm going to use this piece of paper. I'm just going to dab off the excess and then paint it on the sculpture. I'm just going to do the front of the sculpture right now for demonstration purposes. I think also I'm going to do the top of the mushroom in purple. I think that will be nice, so I'll do that. Dabbing it off each time on uh, the piece of paper so that the excess comes off. There we go. And then I'm, I have a cloth in my lap and I'm just wiping it off on the cloth just to, just to get it off so the color doesn't get mixed up in the next color. This, this one here is blue, it looks pink. It's pearlescent, so what that means is if the light hits it a certain way, it'll look different colors. But this is actually duo red blue is the uh, is the color, and you can see it's it's very pretty. It's going to put it on his pants and on his arm and shirt. There we go, and then I'm going to wipe it off again. I'm going to get silver. Get a little bit on there and put it on, I guess I'll just dab it on the paper. And then I'll put it on his beard. Like that. And then I'm going to do uh, antique bronze on his face and on his hands. So we'll dab on his hands there. And maybe on his shoes too. But on his shoes. And then I've got uh, green here, and I'm going to put that on the base, I think. I was going to put it on the mushroom, but I don't think I am. I actually think I'm just going to do the base of the mushroom in bronze. I think that might be nice. There we go. And, uh, and then wipe it off again, and the stalk of the mushroom I'm going to do in bronze. Now we're going to talk about baking. Um, this is uh, polymer clay, is baked clay, um, and we are, this clay that I'm working with today, and what I recommend is Sculpey 3, um, and uh, it's polymer clay. It's what I use the most, uh, pretty much all the time. Um, it's called Sculpey 3, and I recommend it a lot of my videos, I really like it. Um, and so, uh, what you're going to do is preheat your household oven to 275 degrees and then um, you can put your sculpture on a plate uh, like a very shiny type plate, one that doesn't have texture on it like a, a ceramic plate um, and for something like this 
it might be good to just take um, like uh, something that w that won't you know get ruined by the heat like a, a, a jar with an open lid with no lid on it or something like that just to support the uh, the sculpture so it doesn't fall over when it's cooking and you should definitely keep that in mind because it could do that and then it might mess it up um, but just something to support it in the back so that it doesn't fall over you can see this is a little it's a little bit wants to fall over a little bit um, and so then uh, and then you bake it for 15 minutes per every for every quarter inch of thickness so if the um, if let's say the thickest part of this sculpture and this is not your sculpture this is my sculpture and we're talking about um, also we're talking about Sculpey 3 we're not talking about whatever brand of clay you used but Sculpey 3 polymer clay um, so if the the thickest portion of this sculpture is maybe what an inch for the stalk of the mushroom then you would cook this for an hour so 15 minutes per quarter inch of thickness of clay okay and uh, and then when you when it's in the when it's done take it out of the oven with an oven mitt set it down and let it cool completely because the clay uh, will be soft while it's hot so you don't want to mess with it okay and other than that that's about it for the for the baking um, if you like this kind of content I do a lot of videos along these lines and uh, please subscribe to my channel um, if you like the video please definitely give it a thumbs up that does help a lot I would really appreciate it and if you have any comments questions or ideas for videos that you would like to see uh, that I might do for I uh, do um, leave all that in the comment section um, I really appreciate you watching I appreciate your support thank you and have a great day